Welcome to the third uh, module. We are in the fourth week and we started looking at uh, coupled oscillations and uh, we had progressed up to the point where we looked at the solutions of uh, a coupled oscillator and we understood that you could do a change of coordinate system in which the solution becomes very simple. So, just to quickly do a recap of what we have been doing, we wrote down the equation of motion in the u and v coordinate system and once you do this, what has happened is now you have two equations of motion which are uncoupled. So, the equation of motion for u does not involve the variable v and vice versa. So, you can immediately write down what are the frequencies, so which is what is uh, shown here. The trick in going from describing the equation of motion in x y coordinate system to the one which is described in terms of u and v was basically a following. So, you did a coordinate transformation from x comma y to u comma v and uh, most importantly this is the transformation u was x plus y and v was x minus y. So, in some sense we are lucky to have been able to discover this set of coordinate system in which the equations became uh, uncoupled. And once it became uncoupled, it was straightforward to write down the solutions because each of the equation essentially looks like a one dimensional simple harmonic oscillator equation. We introduced the term that these two frequencies omega 1 and omega 2 are what would be called normal mode frequencies and this u of t and v of t are simply called normal modes or normal mode um, solutions. And we also saw that since each of the normal mode does not interact with the other normal mode, the energies of each of these is a constant and the total energy of the entire system is also a constant. Whereas, if you look at it from the point of view of x y coordinate system, you will notice that the equation of motion for x involves y and vice versa. So, the individual energies are not conserved, but miraculously the total energy uh, is a constant of motion. With this background, let us uh, today look at a way of solving this in general. As I said before, we were quite lucky to be able to discover this set of coordinate transformation which uncouples the coupled system of equation. But there is no guarantee that the same coordinate transformation would work for any other uh, coupled problem. In general, you, re you need to each time find out a different set of coordinate transformation which will uncouple provided it exists. So, here what we are going to do is not to guess or be lucky in our pursuit of these special kinds of coordinate systems, we will write out a systematic way by which we can actually achieve this. Let us continue with the same system that we have been using which is two pendula connected by a spring and I have here the two equations. Now, I am going to solve it differently from the way we did. I will not a priori introduce these magical set of coordinates. So, my starting point is this assumption that whatever be the frequency with which the entire system is oscillating, it is doing with one particular frequency. So, let me explain it, but by first writing down the solution that I am going to assume. So, I am going to assume that x of t is a e power i omega t where omega is one of the normal mode frequencies and y of t is b e power i omega t. So, what is implicit in this choice of solution is that the entire system is oscillating with one particular frequency. So, physically that should not be very surprising simply because um, after all it is one system coupled system and there is no way that one part of the system can oscillate 
with a very different frequency from other part of the system. So, in general the entire system is oscillating with one frequency which is what is implied in this uh, assumed uh, solution. And also I have made some assumption about the initial condition basically that the velocity is uh, 0. If the velocity initial velocity is not 0 then I would have had to add additional phases to it, but let us simplify the problem and assume that the initial velocity is uh, 0. Now, all that I want to do is to substitute these things back in this equation. So, let us do that as the uh, next step. So, now uh, what I am going to do is to collect all the terms with A and B together and write out these two uh, equations. So, now I have this two sets of equation is just rearranged from here to here. Now, you can see that I can elegantly write it in uh, matrix form. So, this is the matrix multiplies to this vector which has elements A and B and on the right hand side I have 0, 0. This entire matrix I can rename it as M and this vector I could uh, rename it as chi. So, in matrix notation this would simply be m times chi is equal to 0. Non-trivial solutions for the system of equations needs to exist. To say that A and B should have non-trivial solution which means that the solution should be something other than 0 because if I put A equal to 0, B equal to 0, you will notice that it trivially satisfies this system of equations. And imagine if A and B are equal to 0, it simply means that amplitude is 0, there is no oscillation. So, that is not the solution that we want. So, we want some non-zero values for A and B and that will be satisfied if um, determinant of M is equal to 0. So, this is a standard result in uh, linear algebra. In case you are not aware of it, I urge you to go back and look at uh, relevant chapters in any typical uh, linear algebra book. For a system of equation like this, a non-trivial solution for chi will exist if determinant is equal to 0. So, I am going to calculate the determinant of m now and that is fairly straightforward to do. So, I have written the expression for determinant of m and it is set equal to 0 and I just need to solve it for the only unknown which is there in this equation which is omega. So, we know what is omega 0, we know what is omega s, I just need to find out uh, the unknown frequencies which I had uh, started my problem with. So, this is one result. Again if you recollect one of the frequencies was simply omega 0 itself which is what we have got now. So, I have the second uh, equation and uh, this can be easily uh, simplified. So, this is my second frequency and now when you compare these two results, you will notice that this is exactly the result that we had got earlier on in the last module by just adding and subtracting the two equation from which we started with basically these two equations. But now purely based on physical motivation that the whole system would oscillate with a single frequency simply assume that the solutions are of the form A e power i omega t or some amplitude times e power i omega t for x and y component and then compute x dot x double dot substitute it back and demand that A and B should give you non-trivial uh, solutions. So, again you have two possible uh, normal mode frequencies which exactly coincides with the result that we had uh, got earlier. And finally, before I uh, close this, one might ask like where are we seeing these kinds of coupled oscillators? In fact, most of the time you do see large number of uh, particles oscillating together whether it is sound waves or uh, many other mechanical waves. 
in particular, uh, for example, one can think of simple examples like um, say the carbon dioxide molecule. Say this is a carbon molecule and maybe oxygen molecule here. Okay. Of course, there there is no spring, but it is the potential uh, that is responsible for keeping them together and each of them could be oscillating. So, that is an example of a coupled oscillation and in fact, in this case you have three particles, one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms. So, in principle you have three uh, normal modes and three normal mode frequencies. So, it is something that you can sort of generalize. We saw that when you had, when we had two pendula coupled by a spring, because you had two particles finally, and we ended up with two normal modes and two normal mode frequencies. And it is also not too difficult to see that when you have things like these carbon uh, dioxide molecule and so on, you have three particles and you would actually get three normal mode frequencies. In general, you should expect to see n normal modes for uh, an n particle uh, system. And we will see some more examples of the coupled oscillations in the next uh, lecture.